All right. Shall I? Go ahead. Right. Um, so first and foremost, thank you for the presentation, for introduction. Um, so this is academia. So no, no um, talk at academia will be um, complete without a trigger warning. Here's mine. <laughs> so I'll be talking about bleeding edge software. So we just did it completely last week. So. Um, we'll be talking about direct access to database, so untried concepts. So you've been warned. If this it evokes memory, traumatic memories of database losses, of um, your servers being hacked to pieces by North Korean hackers, you still have time to leave the room. <laughs> All right? And if you're not leaving the room, you know what you're getting into. So without further ado, so it always starts with an itch, at least with me, right? I had an itch. What was his itch? Um, we had the Orient project. Uh, we, we built a platform thanks to the Australia, the Australian taxpayers. So thanks to most of you, I guess. Uh, and you pay my salary as well, so kudos to you. Um, so we provide the platform for uh, urban researchers. So data, uh, we get more than 4,000 data sets available so you can shop for. Um, these data sets, some of our hosts by us, some we uh, just re um, automatically request from other from, uh, organizations other than, or, other than us, other than Orin. So we, and within the safety of your browser, you can analyze those data. So you can shop for data, you can analyze data, we provide um, statistical analysis tool, mapping tool stuff. And moreover, we have an API that you can access with the usual um, three letter acronyms from OpenGIS Consortium. So we get uh, CSW for metadata, WFS for features, and we also have WPS which run on a class which is powered by 52 nodes, which I don't know if you are familiar with. Anyway, see, uh, is a WPS server, uh, Java-based WPS server. And my personal gripe is that no one is using it. No one is using, oops, 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 oops. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's better. So no one is using it. No one is using WPS. And uh, really, I cannot, where's my cursor? Right. I cannot really blame them, right? WPS is a sub has a sub style kind of API. XML around is complex, not particularly pretty, let's put it this way. Um, moreover, um, just this concept of you sending data to the server, doing some geoprocessing, and getting your data back. So I'm not saying that this is the only paradigm, but um, which doesn't really sit well because we provide data we'd like to uh, users. Um, to power users or developers to use the data we already have in store, right? Rather than provide their own. Um, the other thing is that since the this concept of WPS has this idea of having um, the, an application server, which means that um, user provided software is doesn't really sit well. It has to be analyzed, it has to be stored, um, run with all the rest of the infrastructure which is not terribly conducive, you see, uh, to an easy deployment. So deployment is complicated, in other words. Um, so I was looking for a, a better back scratcher for my itch. And I thought, yeah, well, it should be something that allows, you know, pieces of software provided by the users or developers um, to run in isolation. I would like to, to scale up and down as the demand increases or decreases. And um, I would like to be close to the data as well. Uh, and simple, yes, yeah, simple to deploy, simple to run, HTTP, RESTful, any, any, anyone. So that looks a lot like serverless. I know I'm pretty aware that you're in, you know what serverless is, serverless is, but just to remind you, serverless doesn't mean that there are no servers, it's just that you don't see the servers, they are managed for you by something or someone, right? Good. 
So a better term would probably be no ops, is that you don't need to worry about ops. Um, a better, an even better term would be fast functions as a service. Why functions? Because functions, which are pieces of software, which the, the with a definite input and definite output, they uh, are stateless. They have, have no side effects. Um, they sit well with a distributed architecture. So if you want to do parallel, functions is the way to go. Um, which, has, which is all very good and great, but where's the geoprocessing bit? And moreover, where are the data, right? So you can load, of course, all the mm, packages in your function. You, so you, uh, but you still have, you still have to write data, right? Um, so I was looking for something better, to be honest. And uh, so if only there was a tool that handles data and can do a lot of geoprocessing on top of it. And luckily there is, <laughs> you see? Good old Postgres. So, and Postgres can really do it all. 3D, 2D, advanced routing, Rasta, topological overlays, phew, hundreds really. So why to reinvent the wheel after all? Um, so that's why we did PG fast. PG, the PG part of it, well, obvious. The FAS part of it is slightly less so. Um, we used a thing called OpenFAS, which is basically AWS Lambda for the rest of us. Um, it runs either on uh, Docker Swarm clusters or Kubernetes clusters, right? So if you access to um, your own private cloud with, uh, say, OpenStack, you can deploy the OpenFAS, uh, you will dump the Docker Swarm or something, and you're good to go. And it is not as powerful as Lambda, of course, but yeah, it gets the job done. What it does is basically uh, every function is transformed into a Docker container, and it is run over the Docker Swarm, and uh, it is scaled wow. horizontally um, as need be. This, in, in essence, what it does. So, um, there's a little bit about the architecture. The, so there is, um, these are the bits that we developed, the UI, more on it in a second, and the API. So you deploy a function using the API, which is a RESTful one, uh, which is then packaged into a Docker container, uh, sent to OpenFAS, and it is, OpenFAS works as magic, it's scaled up and down as need be, and, but all, every function can access PostgreSQL, um, a database that you have set up. So the client application, once it's done, I mean the function has been deployed, it can reuse many times by anyone really, uh, so not, not necessarily a developer. This is a tool for building applications rather than geoprocessing a pipeline, for instance. So it's a, slight, it's a different use case from, um, from, from the guy before me. Um, and of course, see, to just to ease the pain of using the API, it, we develop a new UI uh, more on it later. So, and you may thinking, but is it safe? Well, arguably, yeah, it is unsafe. It's not safe. Um, although functions run in isolation, so a misbehaved function cannot break down the entire system. They are limited in the CPU they can use, the amateur RAM, the time they run, there's a timeout. Um, moreover, the database they access uh, is defined by the system admin. So what I did is just to have users um, to uh, be read only and to have access to only one schema or one database. So it's pretty limited. Um, I'm speaking of which, there are no connection parameters. When you deploy your function, if you write your function, you don't have to enter any parameter. Everything is handled by the infrastructure. So how does that look like this? 
Uh, for the time being, we um, have used only Node.js, but nothing prevents you from, I mean, from developing an extension with Python or something. So this, uh, that's the uh, SQL query that you want to run. Uh, this is just, this clips um, a layer uh, with a re rectangular box uh, and returns the results. So there are some parameters. You, you see dollar sign one, two, three, four, which are taken from the body of the request because this runs a, as an HTTP post request. So send to the database and then you um, process the results. And that's all it is. No connection, no nothing, nothing really. I mean, I, I, it's very simple, in other words. Um, so now the demo, hoping that it works. Now this is slightly inconvenient here, yeah, but um, I'll try to make it work. Okay, so if you go to sandbox PG file, sorry, or get you wrong. Um, you can have this. Um, aside from deleting functions and modifying the sample um, namespace, because functions are divided in namespaces, uh, you can do everything you want, right? So you can have a go. Uh, it's error handling is horrible, so it's really bleeding edge. So you can bug me, of course, but not that much. Um, so how does it look like? Uh, Okay, this is nothing to do with SQL. Um, it's just a simple way of uh, showing you the concept. So every, oh, you can have more than one. It is a function, but you can have one, more than one point of entry, which means that you can have a mini API. If you want to develop an application, um, you can have uh, you know, more than the, the one function to call. So for instance, this is a, um, a so this is the, the, the payload. So this one will be sent to the, um, to the, um, to PGFAS, and then the Docker container will be used and stuff and that. And this is a very complicated way to, uh, to make an addition. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, but, um, it is minus, let's try with that. Ah, yeah, it kind of works. So more, se slightly more seriously, you can um, browse the database, which is just OpenStreetMap for New Caledonia. So just to, you know, stuff. Uh, let's go back to this, to the functions. So I brought, oh, this one, I brought this function here. So what it does is just to select to do two queries because you can have multiple queries of course packed together. Um, so it just selects the number of uh, roads and the number of points uh, in that particular um, uh, database and returns a, a JSON package, easy. Now something uh, more complicated and more presumably more useful is containing this OpenStreetMap function. This does a clipper rectangle, uh, sorry, clip uh, roads based on rectangle. This does the um, key nearest neighbors bus stops. Um, and this computes the shortest uh, route between two uh, nodes. Uh, these are the 20 nearest bus stops to a point in New Caledonia. No, I understand this is slightly not terrifically visual. So let's try it. Let's try it with, oh, see that this is an HTTP really. It can be done from every, um, every uh, um, environment. So this is um, Jupyter. So this is a Python code. It's just a normal request with normal post request with a JSON payload, let's do it. And here we are. So these are the seven uh, closest uh, bus stops to this point. Something more, slightly more interesting. Let's find out the five shorter routes between two random nodes. It is computing, blah, 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 stuff, stuff. 
stuff. But yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, am I done? Yes, I'm done. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you given any thought to how you might handle um, online processes? Like they have a sort of create those three options at um, the Yeah, yeah, there is, um, uh, there is um, an issue on that on GitHub. So there is a thing in, in PG, sorry, in OpenFast, you can have asynchronous requests, asynchronous, fu sorry, asynchronous functions. So, you know, when that one is completed, then it calls another function or trigger something. So that could be a way to address that. Well, yeah, you absolutely, absolutely. Whatever is uh, the guy before me said, you have divided the conquer. So functions have to be atomic, right? And then you, they respond to events, they tr by triggered by events, and then they call each other. And so I haven't explored this space. But yeah, the, the, I would say synchronous functions are the way to go. Um, but keep in mind that this is not for geoprocessing big data, this is just for developing uh, applications. We, Right. Not the kind of not the sort of application. No. Given that the that it's um, dual punishable, is there is there a possibility of um, memoization or caching of the results? No. <laughs> no, but since you mean um, well not that I no. Uh, the the thing is I don't see it. And actually, you're really constrained in what you can do now. You cannot uh, mm, uh, install packages on your, uh, on your system, on your Docker container, right? Uh, because I would like to keep it safe. And I would like to implement, there is another issue request on that. Um, I would like to implement um, actually the, um, uh, the analysis of the, of the source code as it comes through when you deploy a function to avoid people in trying to install anything or to requiring packages like HTTP, so uh, making strange things which would be dangerous. But nothing prevents from, from doing that. It's just that I don't see it in my particular use case. But. Last question, make, make it quick. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, but, but you're holding it all back from the chin. If you've got uh, a lot of horizontal scaling happening with yeah. lots of people interacting with the system, yeah. are you likely to see like high up throttling happening at the database level, like performance issues? Oh well, this is tried, so I cannot I cannot really answer. I haven't uh, I haven't tested, so the short answer is I don't know. Uh, but. PostgreSQL and this particular sandbox runs on very small virtual machines. And uh, it runs on a small, mm, with a small database server. But since this is read only, you just have to, p to put PG Bouncer in front of it, and you can have as many uh, PostgreSQL um, database servers uh, uh, behind it, right? Or if you are very into, you are serious about scaling, use PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL. Uh, which has which supports PostGIS and that should be fine, right? Okay, look up. <laughs> <laughs>